Hi, and welcome to Comsky Corner. Today we're going to be talking about network topologies and the internet. This video is specifically for the new OCR GCSE Computer Science course. However, it's applicable for most exam boards. What I mean by network topology is the setup of the network, and there are two network topologies that you need to be aware of. The first is called a star network. This is where all the nodes are connected to a central device called a switch. Star networks tend to be fast and reliable as data collisions are less frequent. This is because each node has its own connection to the center, so if a fault occurs in one, the other links are not affected. Also, it is easy to add more devices to a star network. However, they can be a lot of work to set up. More importantly though, the main disadvantage of a star network is that the performance depends on the single switch. So, if there is a problem with the switch, the whole network will collapse. The second network topology is called a mesh topology, where each node is connected to every other node. In a mesh network, all nodes are involved in the transmission of a message, and there are multiple paths between the devices, so no central switch is required. This is beneficial as it means that there is no single point of failure within the network. However, a lot of wire is needed to connect all the devices to all the other devices, making mesh networks expensive and difficult to set up. Lastly, I just want to note that as you can see on this picture on the right, mesh networks can be full mesh or partial mesh. Full mesh is where every single node is connected to every other node, whereas in a partial mesh, only some nodes, but not all of them, are connected to every single other node. Now let's take a look at what a domain name server is and how they are used. So a DNS or a domain name server is an internet service device that translates URLs into IP addresses. Every website has a URL and an IP address linked to this URL. So when you search for a website on the internet, the browser will send the website's web address, so the URL, to the DNS, where it will translate the URL into the IP address. If it finds it, then the IP address is sent back to the browser, where the web server will process the request for the website, and use the IP address to find, load, and send the web page to the user. All that can seem like a lot to start off with, so let's look at a practice question to break this up into little bits. So this question says that the IP address 192.149.119.226 is linked to the website with a URL of https colon double slash www.ocr.org.uk. When this URL is entered into a browser, the website homepage is loaded. And you are asked to describe the relationship between the website URL, the IP address, and the web server. Pause the video here if you would like to have a go, and then we will go through the answer. Okay, so to answer this question, let's first deal with the website. The website is hosted on a web server and has an IP address and a URL. Next, let's address what the DNS does with this information. So once the web browser sends the URL to the DNS, it looks up the URL and returns the correct linked IP address. If it can't find it, it sends it to a higher DNS. If the higher DNS still cannot find the IP address, then an error message is returned. This is why you will sometimes get a 404 error if the web page cannot be found. If the DNS does find the IP address, it sends it back to the browser. So the browser is what communicates with the DNS. Once the IP address has been found and returned, the web server processes the request of the website and sends the web page to the user. So, as you can see, we have split this question into three parts. The website, the DNS, and the web server. The answer to this question is really worth noting down, as it clearly and simply shows you everything you need to know about the role of the DNS. Now, you need to be aware of what domain names are and what hosting is. So, hosting is where resources are shared on a web server called a host for other computers to access. The host name consists of domain names organized in three hierarchical levels. The domain name is the identification string that refers to the resources. 
And as we just mentioned, the domain name system is a hierarchy, as you can see in the picture on the left. The top level root is generic to many websites and includes things like .com, .uk, .gov, etc. The second level denotes the type of organization, so things like .co, .org, etc. And lastly, the third level is the organization name, like OCR and BBC. And each of these domain names are separated by a dot. For example, a host name could be bbc.co.uk, where BBC is the third level domain name, .co the second level domain, and .uk the top level domain. Next, let's talk about the cloud. The cloud provides remote storage, software, and processing. It has many advantages to being virtual, such as the fact that it is easy to share files and that the files can be accessed from anywhere with stable internet connection. It is also useful as there is no need to update or backup applications or maintain the system, as your cloud provider will take care of all of that for you. This is especially useful in the case of a company or organization, as they do not need to hire someone to manage the network which can be expensive, so it saves them money. There are a couple of disadvantages, though. First, if you don't have access to the internet, you can't access your files. Also, you are trusting the company to safely store your data, which is not always the case, especially since data stored online is easier to intercept. Make sure that when you are talking about the advantages and disadvantages of anything, that you relate it to the scenario given in the question. For example, if you were asked to give the benefits and drawbacks of a legal firm using the cloud storage, instead of just saying that the files can be accessed from anywhere with internet connection, you also need to say that this is useful because it means that lawyers can take cases from anywhere with internet connection or something like that. Or for a drawback, as well as saying that there are safety threats with storing your information on the cloud, also mention that for example, if the firm's client's data was intercepted or exposed, that the firm would be in a lot of trouble. In this video, we've looked at network topologies and the internet, focusing on star and mesh topologies, domain name servers, domain names and hosting, and cloud storage. So if you've enjoyed this video, then please be sure to give it a big thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more. See you next time. Bye!